Hey everybody, what is going on? We are back. Rebecca Minnick, Ace Baby. Oh, wrong, wrong side, Ace Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need the mirroring too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it won't work on the app on my phone. So yeah. Um, oh, well. look, we before we even got on, we have two comments. James F, what's going on, party people? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> I was just listening to Flo Rida, so <laughs> there is that. <laughs> and Todd, what's up, Todd? He's making dinner and listening. Uh, what are you fixing? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> today, um, is, today is pasta day for me. Yes. Pasta day. Well, I used to, one of my favorite meals was Alfredo, like store-bought ragu alfredo mm -hmm. absolutely loved it i would do that with pasta and then a lot of parmesan cheese and garlic salt or garlic powder mm, so delicious but i try to stay away from pasta for the most part now but i used to i love that yep, spaghetti be over so, <laughs> pasta. you got me a paschetti they'll send some little... over when I was little, I always called it Puschetti. I don't know why, but I've always done it just because. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We Right off the bat, we got eight people. Uh, hey, leave some comments. Say hello to everybody. Be a part of the crowd. Uh, we're we're going to have some good old fun here talking about disc golf. And before we get really rolling, look at this. Look what arrived at my house. <laughs> so glad you got it. Thanks so much for the support. You are certainly welcome. That is awesome. Uh, after I got this one, I was like, darn, I should have got the other one, too. <laughs> Do you have the other one, too? Yes, I have both. Let's see. We're going to switch places, and I'm going to make you bigger than me. There you are. I'm trying to, okay, so that's mine, which we've already seen. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, well, I actually rotated it the correct way. There yeah. We go. I was, uh, Oops, when yeah. I... When I did my unboxing, I, I was like, it's got an elephant on it. It's got some books on it. It's got some musical notes on it. And I couldn't think of anything else. And right here, I see a butterfly. Yeah, so it has the butterfly wings. There's an elephant. There's a lotus flower on the top. It's like the crown. There mm -hmm. are hummingbirds. There's music mm -hmm. notes. This right here, its tusks are actually um, chains. Nice. And then you have music, the music going out, and then the book, and then PDGA number, and really cool background. So that's awesome. the other disc. And of course, like he recently showed uh, my design. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Butter Elephant is sick. <laughs> Hello, Caleb. How are you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the chat. <laughs> and, and, Caleb. <laughs> and Todd also says uh, he's got some shredded cheese for the spaghetti. Nice. Man, is there garlic bread? I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, you know what? We're going to switch places for a quick second. So, yeah, I'm still really big. <laughs> Look what come in. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> Sadly, it's mine are not for sale. Incredible disc off. Mine are not for sale, but maybe one day <laughs> when I become, you know, somebody other than a really bad amateur. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Last week we were in Florida and we left Florida. Tell me about the, the trip. I mean, well, the, the packing and everything. Uh, and then you get out back on the road. Where are we at? Yeah, so of course we talked more about my time in Florida on the last podcast, um, which was last Wednesday. I we had arrived here at I think like three a.m. on Sunday evening. So Monday was our first full day here, and um, I got to play Bud Hill, which is the course that they're playing skins at. Um, so it was a a super busy time back in Florida. Honestly, it was more busy than like traveling to play disc golf. <laughs> um, and got here. I played um, Bud Hill on Monday. I didn't 
end up getting to the course um, at, for the Jonesboro Open, which is called Disc Side of Heaven is the course. Um, so very cool name. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I went to Bud Hill and it's a privately owned course. It is like my favorite privately owned course that I think I've ever played. We went back and played it again, actually on Sunday. So yesterday, um, and I did not have as fun of a time then, but that was mostly just because I was extremely exhausted and worn out. Like I still kind of feel pretty exhausted and worn out from this past week. Um, I think so a little bit of this is maybe like catching up with me, um, before, you know, I went like week after week after week and I would be, I'm always really, I, I feel really exhausted at the end of a tournament week, especially like having so many practice rounds and then playing the tournament rounds. But I feel like it's hitting me a little bit harder lately. Um, so anyway, um, Andy had a really fun time. He, he loved that course as well. Um, I was more there to support him and, uh, <laughs> but my body was like, no, let's not play disc golf right now. <laughs> Um, and my calf, um, is actually, uh, suffering a little bit from that. It's not injured, but it's definitely like pooled and it was yesterday. And then it still is today. I took an Epsom salt bath. It didn't really seem to help much. And I'm going to do some more work on it, um, later tonight, uh, to try to like work out, um, whatever tightness and tension that's going on there. Um, so anyway, the start of the week was that. And of course the eclipse, I'm kicking myself because, I didn't go and see it. Um, exactly. I mean, I kind of saw it, but I wasn't in totality and I was only like, and so, um, we drove to Memphis, which was, I believe thir like 13 hours of driving mm -hmm. from Florida. Um, Andy has some family here, so we're staying, we've stayed with them, um, before, going to Jonesboro and staying in Airbnb, we, we actually, um, stayed with CJ with Dojo Discs and he makes some just awesome, just, I, I have no idea why I didn't bring that disc in. Um, Hey babe, if you're watching, maybe you can go and grab those discs and grab yours. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have him do it again. Last, last week he grabbed these for me and this time I was prepared with that, but hey, I, didn't, I didn't grab those discs. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, he, um, before arriving, he actually dyed me a TD, which was a new disc that I was trying out and um, had just started bagging. And then he also dyed me a passion. I've had, um, I think I've only had a passion dyed once and it was by Moogly Dyes and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was like one of my favorite dyed discs, but I lost it twice and I got it back the first time. Yeah, Big Andy. <laughs> I got it back once and then the second time I lost it at Texas States on hole 16 to the right in the big pond in the water and I never got it back mm -hmm. I was so sad about it. it was like this beautiful vibrant green and purple um so anyway CJ dyed me a really pretty um passion as well which I didn't even know that he was going to do that that one as well so when I got there it was like Christmas and these uh, beautifully dyed discs. Um, and of course I have to give a shout out to, to Mike with Moogly dyes. Cause he keeps my bag absolutely gorgeous with so, so, so many beautiful dyes. Um, if anyone follows me on Instagram or Facebook, then you've certainly seen many of his dyed discs. The Mambas look amazing by the way. <laughs> yes. I love them. They are so flippy, though. Like, I, I like them. I still can throw them, but they definitely, like, somewhere like Jonesboro, where the wind is just blowing, I couldn't oh, really gosh. throw them very much because it was just much too windy. I mean, that's part of the problem with me still building back my my power and strength is that I kind of need to use these lighter weight or more flippy discs, but then when it comes to throwing in the wind they don't hold up and I do have some discs that hold up in the wind um but I'm just not as used to throwing them um and still really working on solidifying that form I feel like this whole weekend in terms of my form was kind of a couple steps backwards um instead of forwards thank you say hi to Andy everyone <laughs> hey, Andy. all right so I'm number. I'm Andy's number two favorite fan because you know you're gonna be number one. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, that's so awesome. This is the disc that he died for Andy, and I forget which disc this is. Hey, Andy, which disc is this? Oh, well, he already went downstairs. Hello, Chris. So you can see, really, really beautiful. And he did this on site. So Andy just gave him one of the discs from his bag, and he, um, we actually got to watch him do pretty much the entire process. It was really cool. Um, and then this is the one he did for me. Super cool. This is the TD. Um, and then here's the passion that he did. Oh, so really, really cool. That's beautiful. Yeah, I love I think this one's like my favorite die. I love this one, but I, I like this a lot as well. Um, so anyway, thank you so much. Shout out to CJ from Dojo Dies. Um, he's doing a lot of really cool things. He had his him and his associate, they were set up there. And um, also like the Dis Dyers Guild, I think. Um, and yeah, just really cool people. And we got to stay at an Airbnb with them and they were awesome, let us stay there. So um, yeah, r really, really um, great time getting to hang out with them some and um, get to see and experience some of Caleb has um, Big Andy's number one. <laughs> hey, the disc is a yeah. strider. The disc is a strider. Strider, the one that... Um, I don't died. know that disc. Yeah, so I, I think he hasn't thrown it quite as much since starting to throw the Nautilus from Neptune Disc because he loves the Nautilus. I love the Nautilus as well. It's just a really, really fantastic disc. Um, but Andy throws the Nautilus all the time, and I guess that kind of is very similar to the strider but i, I believe the strider is a little bit more stable mm -hmm. um so chris just picked up his first uh neptune i think he got the merlin i believe the Marlin. Hey, chris, chris you're in the comment let me know which disc you got i think he said it was the merlin he actually showed it to me today pretty sure it was the merlin <laughs> okay so yeah so yeah so the the marlin is the most flippy disc for sure that they have it's the the marlin is very understable and then um nautilus rocks thanks todd and then the, the um, splash is next in stability and then the nautilus i would say is uh the most stable but it's very glidey so it glides for a while and then it it does a pretty good job of dumping at the end um, I haven't really been successful at turning it over, but I think Andy can turn it over if um, he tries. But I I love it. Think it's a great disc. So anyway, um, so getting getting back to traveling from Florida, getting here to Memphis. Hello, Luke. Luke, the Marlin is money. Nice. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is a really awesome, uh, great understable Whoa, disc. I was way off. <laughs> Um, so got here really er technically early Monday morning and then attempted to go last minute, see the eclipse. And that was my problem. I just didn't like plan for it very well because my mind was so much on the million things I had to do in Florida and then packing again and then traveling and getting here. And there was like no preparation. So then the day of, you know, Andy was like, Hey, do you want to go try to, um, see the eclipse and I was like okay yeah like let's do that because I'd kind of mentioned it the day before but hadn't really done anything about it and we tried to go to multiple places to get glasses and couldn't find glasses and they were all sold out um, and then by the time it started most of the sun was was covered by the moon but not all of it and um, and it's crazy how I, I feel like there have to be a lot of analogies about this but how ridiculously like create how bright the sun is even if this tiny tiny little sliver of the sun is showing and um so we did kind of make like a, a work around to be able to like see it some but it was um there was still a little bit of the sun showing it at every point but it was still awesome like it was still really cool um I just wish that I would have done a little bit better job of like planning and preparing for that. So that's all on me. <laughs> um, uh, and I, I had like family members that traveled much farther to go see totality in like Kentucky or other places. So, um, well, I mean, yeah. to be fair, they didn't give you enough warning that there was going to be an eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. 
I mean, I, I wanted to, but I was like, I have to drive to the other side of Kentucky from Virginia. I mean, I got to go across the entire state and I'm like, yeah, you know, for it's not worth it. And then where I am, they said we we're going to have um, like 85 percent coverage. And it yeah. looked like uh, like a cloud had come over and that's about all the darkness we had really yeah. made me sad. But hey, 2099, there's going to be a full one here in Lynchburg. So that's all I got to wait for. Yeah, I mean, you know, just stay healthy, eat well, sleep. You get enough sleep and you'll be good. I'll be 127. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what technology we'll have by that there, point. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so anyway, Monday was busy with, I, I definitely slept in, tried to catch up on my sleep. Of course, we had just, just done all of the traveling and we try to travel all the way through so we don't have to, you know, spend any money on um, uh, hotels or Airbnbs or anything like that. Um, so we got here and then we tried to do the eclipse. And then after that, we went and played Bud Hill, which was awesome, and then got back and got ready for the podcast and then um, hung out with his family that evening. So I didn't um, get to go play the course until Tuesday. And it was a very, very rainy week. And like leading up, it didn't, thankfully, it didn't rain at all during the tournament for Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, but, um, it was very rainy and, um, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday beforehand. Um, so I got to practice Tuesday and Thursday on Tuesday. I was able to practice with own, and Lisa Owens Goggins and Lisa Lisa Fakus, I think I'm saying her name correctly. Yeah, um, Lisa, that was the, you posted videos of that, and I was like, I'm so jealous. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I, of course, I've practiced with Own a good number of times, and uh, she has really really fun vibes, chill. You know, it's just it's nice to practice with her. I I've pretty much always like enjoyed it had fun and um lisa was really awesome as well i loved getting to to practice with her and she um so that was my first time playing the course um i had never really seen it i i don't i don't think i'd ever seen full coverage of the entire course maybe i had but i didn't really remember it very well um and lisa was extremely helpful she um, she was constantly like pointing out lines and showing me like, Hey, if you play, you know, put the disc there, if you put the disc there, then like, that's a good landing zone. And, um, and on top of that, my game was just on point. Um, my backhand felt so good. I was throwing far. Like Lisa was even like, yeah, you got like the distance because you have like more distance than us or something like that. I was sitting there thinking like, I didn't like last week. So, but my distance, like really my backhand form was just coming together. It was looking really good. Um, just for perspective, I think it's hole 15. It's, like a 570, I can't remember how, how far it is, but it's a really tough one to birdie. I think I remember I did watch a little bit of coverage and I think I saw Ricky was, had a few rough putts on that hole. It's the one where the OB is a little over circle one past the basket and it's kind of surrounding it on three sides mm -hmm. um and so like during practice I had my drive it was like not quite to the 250 mark it was like behind it and then I threw my disc past the basket my second drive past the basket to like edge of circle one and then I made the edge of circle one raised basket putts which is like one of my least favorite putts and got the birdie on that one. So I ended up shooting a three down. <laughs> wow. Very, very, very different than, than even Thursday, which I ended up shooting a nine over. And then my actual round, the only full round that I played, I shot a 16 over, which was very rough. Um, 
but we'll get into that in a little bit. My my backhand and a lot of stuff just was feeling really off by the time this the tournament started. Um and there was just a lot of stress surrounding everything that that happened. So um anyway, practice round was amazing. It's I would say this this past weekend overall was just very discouraging for me. Um and like not the opposite of a confidence booster. <laughs> Um, but that round in itself was, um, encouraging just because I can look at it and be like, Hey, I can actually attack these courses and shoot really well. Um, it's just putting it all together. Um, and yeah, and that day I actually, I can say for the first time, even though it was just a practice round, I beat own and Lisa as well. I beat own by three strokes and Lisa by like four. So that was wow. <laughs> pretty exciting. Um, yeah, and that had, that had definitely never happened with own before. I'd kind of felt like I kept up with her a little bit, um, in rounds in, in previous practice rounds, but she was super supportive and was like, yeah, let's go Rebecca. And, and she was like, you can do it. And being like encouraging about, um, the actual tournament rounds. So <laughs> that was fun. And, and Lisa as well, Lisa was like super encouraging and positive and happy for me and excited. I, re I really enjoyed, um, getting to practice with Lisa and, and definitely hope that I get to practice with her more in the future. Lisa has a very unique throwing style. I mean, she really gets that arm in really tight and like she's almost grabbing her leg when yeah. she's throwing. And it's, hey, you know, I'm like this. Works. It's very effective for her. It's yeah. really cool to watch. I like getting to see her game. I like getting to play with her, um, like her strategy, everything. It was really, it, it, it was awesome seeing seeing both Lisa and own and see how they like attack the course um, and getting to play with them and getting to keep up and, you know, actually feel like, Hey, I can, I can do this. Um, even if my actual tournament round did not indicate that or show that at all. Um, I know that it's just a matter of time and I'm not, you know, I'm not extremely discouraged about it and I'm, you know, not worried about, uh, I'm not worried about the time, you know, I'm not going to be impatient about it and I'm not going to have, I'm going to do my best anyway to not have bad ex expectations for myself. Um, and I don't want to put unnecessary stress on myself because it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to practice, to prepare, to work on my, all the areas of my disc golf game and my form that I need to. Um, and and I feel like it's more important for me to stay positive about my game and to um, work on my mental game than yep. to, yeah, like it does nothing good to just get upset at myself, you know? And I do get upset at myself sometimes because I'm like, ah, oh, like what, like, what are you doing? You know how to, like, you know how to do this shot. And I'll get into this more later, but that's part of like, it, it was so extremely frustrating to play on Saturday and, um, a lot of people still don't know because I didn't actually post like the reason for why I DNF'd on Saturday. Um, I, I've like, you know, messaged some people that have messaged me and stuff like that. Um, and so some people know, but, or people who like talk to me in person or whatever, because um, I, I caddied for Stacey Ronsley on Sunday. Um, but I actually ended up getting a really, really bad migraine. Um, that the headache started Friday evening. And I think it was a combination of the stress of everything that had happened earlier Friday. It was just very stressful. And then I don't think I did a very good job of hydrating on the course on Friday. So I think I was pretty like dehydrated. And one thing about migraines is that stress is like a big, a big impactor of that. I, I, I grew up having headaches all the time. I mean, terrible, like, not migraines, just headaches all the time. And I would have a headache more than I wouldn't from as early as I can remember. I mean, I remember being like four or five and having headaches. Um, and then about four or five years ago, I just kind of figured it out, I guess, you know, I, I figured out a lot with like my mental health and just being healthy in terms of the way I viewed life and not allowing the stress to bother me as much. I'm, I'm, 
quite the thinker. Like I think through everything, I think through all the scenarios. Um, I'm very observant. So it's like, it, it can be a lot for my mind sometimes and it's easier to get stressed. And so, and I was allowing that to happen and then I didn't sleep very well. And then I was in grad school. And so during, I didn't really have migraines until grad school. And then when I was in graduate school, working on my PhD in chemical engineering, I would get migraines and I had, I had migraines that lasted for months. Like I had one migraine that lasted for three months without going away. And then I had another one that lasted for like two months. But this was kind of odd. Like I, I really hadn't had headaches much at all for the past, like I said, four, five years, maybe Wow. at least three, like not really. And I'm not saying I don't have any headaches, but maybe I've had like one migraine since then. So um, yeah, it started Friday evening after, after round one, or maybe even during round one, I don't know. And then, um, I woke up on Saturday and I did not feel very good at all. I started feeling nauseous. Um, I got to the course, I did my best to like, just keep playing, but it was like, I was out of, it was like out of body. Like I couldn't even think or focus. I, I, I tried to, and it was not working. I, I played eight holes and they were eight very miserable holes. <laughs> um, they were with great people. Um, it was Anne, Anne deputy. It was, um, Anna, Anna Pinter. Anna Pinter. Yeah. She's super nice. Anna. Oh, wait, that was uh, round two. Uh, Hannah Stefanovic, was she on your card? Yes, Hannah was there too. All really, really awesome people. And and they were really kind and understanding. We're like, oh, you know, like, you know, do the best for your body. But I didn't want to DNF if anybody who knows me, like, I hate quitting yep. anything. And um, I, I had to DNF one other time. It was at a tournament not too long after Amateur Worlds last year. That was like after certain, not too long after surgery still. And I really wasn't doing very well. And it was a extremely brutal course. You probably know of this course. It's uh, Mayflower Hills. Yep. And it is a lot like crazy, crazy terrain. I, and I played the front nine and I had to tap out because I had actually got, I just got COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, pl I made it through the first round and like I was my body was not doing well. I was in so much pain. So that's the only other time I had to DNF. And then, um, and I mean, I, I remember own she, the very first time she DNF was just like last year, maybe, or earlier this year, wow. something like that. I, I think it was maybe last year. I don't know. I remember she had been playing for like what, 10 years or something like that. She had never mm -hmm. DNF, which is very, very impressive. Really cool. And I definitely hated to, to have to do that, but I had to listen to my body. It wasn't, it wasn't doing well at all. Yeah, it is. It is a very long and um, demanding course in a lot of ways. So um, yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. Um, and then I felt extremely nauseous and I got back to the Airbnb and I was like dry heaving and like throwing up. It wasn't oh. good. I, I was very sick. Um but thankfully, even by the next day, I was feeling a lot better, even that evening. Um, so I got back to the Airbnb and I fell asleep like as quick as possible, just tried to like block all light out. Um, and when I woke up, I actually like really didn't feel the headache at all. And then it slowly started to kind of come back and was in the back of my head and was just kind of like there and nagging. But then um, by when I woke up Sunday, it was pretty much gone and it hasn't really come back. So that's that's good because I, I I honestly thought especially with how bad it was that it was gonna hang on a lot longer um but thankful that it didn't so that was that was my reason for DNFing I know we're kind of skipping around because we haven't even talked about we haven't <laughs> even talked about my second practice round and we haven't even talked about <laughs> round one but that's what happened on round two I'm sure it's what everybody cares about now <laughs> yeah, I mean I was I was gonna say um my mom she used to get yeah, I mean, like you just said, I mean, she would like like block out as much light as possible and she would, you know, take some medicine for it. And she was miserable when she would get them. And I felt, you know, it's just when when you told me that, I was like, gosh, I feel so bad for you. 
I can't imagine trying to go out in the bright sun, trying to play disc golf in, in that in that winds like it was it was like that'd be brutal. I I was very much struggling. Uh, yeah, it was it was not something that I want to experience again. <laughs> okay, now I let's never go. Does. I never do. And let's go back a little bit because it was Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember which day it was. I was watching uh, a YouTube channel and they were talking about the storms down in Louisiana, um, some in Mississippi kind of creeping up. And I was just like, and they were, they had some tornadoes and stuff in them. And I was kind of worried if that was going to go straight to the tournament and everything. I was like, yeah, so I think we had, we had some tornado warnings weather even in Jonesboro, I believe on thought. Yeah. On Sunday. Of course, mm-hmm. I wasn't playing that round. I just, I caddied, but. Yeah, so, I mean, I was like, gosh, that could be terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so like, any, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, all right, so now we go to the second practice round. Yes, which was Thursday. So Wednesday, I took off and just tried to get some work done. Um, and my, uh, my arm was kind of, just feel it. It wasn't, it didn't feel like injured, but it definitely felt like overused, you know? Mm -hmm. And like in those instances, I try to listen to my body and don't overdo it because I know that there's a much higher likelihood that I'm going to end up injuring myself. And so I would have liked three practice rounds, but honestly, like after the fact, I think it would have only hurt me. Um, because there's only so much more like practice rounds will do, especially if you're just wearing yourself down, wearing your body down. Um, and um, I, I think with how well overall I felt like my body has been managing and handling all of this, um, all of this travel, all of the disc golf, um, I think I just wasn't really expecting what happened this past week and just feeling like just feeling really worn out before the tournament even started, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and so, yeah, on uh, Tuesday, I actually got there at, I think, 840 was when I signed up for the tea time. So we got there really early because there was a window of time, like a three, four hour window where there wasn't any rain. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to get there at this time. And then I did the same thing on Thursday. Um, and that was a later tea time. I think it was 10 something. So you and actually have to like set up a tea time beforehand? You're supposed to. I mean, you can do it even when you get there, honestly, mm-hmm. if there aren't people signed up. But yes, they do have they do have tea times. Um, it used to be a it was really dumb. It was a, a Google Drive sheet that you signed up for. So like anybody could take your name off or put Mm -hmm. your name on if they wanted to. And people did like, I even had that happen to me the second disc golf pro tour event I ever played. Someone like took me off and it was a very interesting situation. I'm not going to go to that story. It's kind of just drama, but anyway, (laughs) so this one is a a little bit better in, in terms of they're using disc golf scene. It just doesn't mm-hmm. cost any money. And so you, you, it's, it's almost, it's like a flex start where you have mm-hmm. all of the different times and, and you can see how many spots are av- available when you can see who's signed up. Um, I think a lot of people don't use it and some people just, you know, show up and, and play, but um, I've been trying to use it and sign up. And, um, but sometimes I have waited until like I, I, I get there and sign up or, or whatever, but yeah, they do have, they do have a way. See, to sign I, up for tea times for I practice always wondered rounds. about that because I see like multiple people um, recording practice rounds. So I was like, I mean, that seems kind of odd that because you know, recording practice rounds for, for those that don't know, recording rounds at all, it takes a lot longer, significantly longer than to just go out and play around. Unless you're Andy because he's a boss and does it really quickly. Well, he can record the round and play it quickly. Yeah, he's I yes. You the man, Andy. He's, he's learned well and like we did more work at the beginning, but yeah, he's really he's really quick at going mm-hmm. playing his I mean, of course, if you were 
was doing around like that, then he probably wouldn't be playing as well. But no, right. he'll, he, he pretty much records any round that we do now. I mean, I even have my terrible round at Bud Hill uh, yesterday. R the whole thing's recorded. Like, it's awful, but I, I can share it. I don't mind, but it's, <laughs> it's not very wait, good. Wait, see, see, like that, when you have someone else recording your round, that's different. But if you're recording, you're you're carrying your stuff yeah. around, yep. that, that makes the round just go on and on. Yeah, and well, Luke, he's still playing though, so he's playing, and then he's going, he's recording me, so it definitely takes um, some skills. Yeah, it, it takes significantly he's... longer because I was thinking about um, like uh, Brody and Ezra. I was like, man, those rounds must take a really long time. Yeah, are they like recording each other? I think um, Ezra's brother do, does the majority of the recording. I think. Okay. I know. I know he's been on a lot of their stuff, but I'm just like, man, that's still got to take a long time. But yeah. you know, well, one day I'm gonna have a uh, an assistant doing all that stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. I, I actually got. I asked um, Owen and Lisa after a little bit because I hadn't really done this much, mostly just because. I'm so focused on like playing and I don't want to be like, Hey, can I like record you? But uh, I was like, Hey, do you guys mind if I like record some of your drives? And they were like, yeah, yeah, I don't mind at all. And then of course I got to make like a, a little reel out of it afterwards, which was fun. Um, but the, yeah, the but Lisa like hole. stepped right in and she, cause I wasn't really going to ask them to like record me. And she was like, Hey, do you like, do you want me to like record some of your shots? And so she was super helpful and just wanted to like, take over the camera and get some shots of me as well, um, which was really fun. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so was able to make a cute little reel with that. And then on Thursday, I played the first seven holes by myself. Um, and I could tell that something was just all, like feeling more off with my backhand. Um, and also it was more windy. And again, with the power, <laughs> with the power that um, I have currently, a lot of my discs are more flippy. And so uh, I definitely ran into some trouble with it being a lot less windy on Tuesday and then it being a lot more windy on Thursday and that wasn't all that attributed to the plus nine. So I shot the three under on Tuesday and then the nine over. So 12 strokes different from the first practice round to the second practice round. Um, but it was also just like some, a lot of like little things that were off. Um, and, and I'll throw two shots on some holes too, you know, um, and everything, especially if my first shot didn't go very well or it turned over or whatever. But I always, in my practice rounds and when I share my scores with you guys, I only share what player one did yep. and not what player two did. Um, so player two definitely was a show off sometimes, but player one <laughs> was absolutely not. Um so yeah, then Leah, she joined me on hole eight, which was awesome. Kind of worked out perfectly because hole eight is where hole one goes down the hill and then you're going back, well, down then up the hill mm -hmm. for hole seven. And then hole eight goes across and you you walk right past hole one at that point. So she arrived and joined me and then I got to to practice with her and did record some of that as well. And she recorded me a lot as well, which was awesome. Thank you so much, Leah. Would you um, like to say her last name? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't even know. Like I, if I could see it in front of me, maybe I could, but I, <laughs> All I, I really know is that I've seen her a few times play. She's awesome. She is awesome. Leah is, is really, she's just really kind, a really, a really cool person, great energy. I, I like Leah a lot. Um, and I enjoy playing with her. I was constantly telling her like, start cause I, even like Thursday, I just had extremely low energy. That was one of the things like, I just, I felt so worn out and worn down already, like before the tournament even started. And I could tell my energy was low too. And I was like, man, Leah, like, I'm sorry. I know my, my energy isn't great, but she was like, no, 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 like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Um, so it was it was really good to be able to play with her and practice um, a little bit over half the course with her. 
and um and she did well it was cool it was really fun watching leah um of course she's a lefty so Which is illegal, yeah but that's okay. <laughs> yes um so um those were that was my practice rounds yeah it was it, all i can say is like first practice round was amazing everything was working everything was clicking my backhand felt so awesome so solid Um, I felt strong. I felt like I had a good grip. And then going into Thursday, I, I felt like I, my body was dead and not, not fully present. I wasn't really able, I think the fatigue really impacted like my game. And, um, that's just going to be a, a learning curve and to try to figure out what I need to do in order to, um, work through that and still have, good tournament rounds, you know? Um, so I think that's on me to, to figure that out. And if you know anything about me, I'm going to do my best to figure it out and have, have much better rounds. So, um, much better tournament rounds than like 16 over. Um, of course there's nothing I can do about like what happened beforehand really, but you know, that was only a part of it. Like that definitely impacted my round, but there was definitely, a lot of it that I know was me and just feeling exhausted and tired and worn out and stuff like that. Was this the first time you've played Jonesboro? Yes. Yes. Very first time. All right. In fact, yeah, very I, I first thought, time I thought that's what you said. In... And, and my thing, so I was watching it for the last few years, they changed the course, like front nine to back nine, mixing things up. I was so upset about that. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say I can really comment on it much mm -hmm. since, like, I wasn't there before. I didn't know the layout. But I really I really enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, I was disappointed that I didn't – that I only got to play one full tournament round. I don't know what that means. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah like, like we used to say in, in mixed martial arts – Fatigue makes cowards of us all. Like, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It was sad that I only got one tournament round at that course. I really wanted to try to attack it. Even like even if I have a round that starts out really terribly, I have a terrible front nine. Like it's it to me, I try to make it as like, even if I do terribly in the front nine, like I can attack the back nine if I keep pushing. My goal is to no matter how I feel about a, a hole or a round and sometimes I will like get a little discouraged in a round and I'll be like oh man like have a bad hole and then have like another bad hole and then like another bad hole and you're kind of like ah that it doesn't feel good um but but I think it's really awesome to like have the mental fortitude and will to keep pushing keep pushing through and trying to do your best on every hole even if you've done very poorly on previous holes um but I really didn't, I only had the opportunity to play the course once and then I didn't get to play um, the the other two rounds, which was disappointing to me. But it happens. It is what it is. There's nothing that I could, could have done about what happened and it wouldn't have been a good idea for me to try to push through um, the second round. All right, let's jump into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because um, first off, um, Thursday, I sent you a text. All it said was 722. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yep. Yep. That's pretty common, like for early tea times. Of course, this is day one. So this isn't based on, you know, right. how well you've played so far. Um, it's, it's randomized. It's not exactly random, but you know, it is, there is a little bit more randomization in that or a little bit more uh, of a, a balance. Oh, it's the phonetic. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to even try. I'm still not going to try to say it. I'm going to ask her. Jenna Jenny. <laughs> I, I, did, I did not know. And I've been meaning to ask her when I see her, like, Leah, please, can you tell me how to pronounce your your last name? I mean, there's a there's a podcast and we have to know. 
<laughs> yeah. So anyway, the yeah, the, so the first I was the first card out, which has happened multiple times. It didn't happen at the open at Austin. That was kind of nice. I was on the second card out or third card out. I think it's the third, I I think it's the third card. Then the second round, I think, is the second card. Um, or vice versa. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, I can't remember. I thought it was maybe like third card, third card, second card, maybe. Mm -hmm. Something maybe, like that. Maybe, yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't ever end up on the first card. Um, and yeah, so it was like super early and. All right. So preparing before that, obviously I don't, you know, I kind of have an idea of generally like what the weather is going to look like. And, and we did know about the shuttle schedules like beforehand. Um, but it was ended up like the night before is usually when I plan, okay, this is when I'm going to wake up. This is how long I need to get there beforehand because I'm super busy leading up to this. You know, I'm preparing and my, I'm focused on certain things each day. I'm like, I'm focused on practicing. I'm focused on this and there's too many things to do and worry about to deal with all of those at once. And if I did, then I'd be way less efficient you know, because I'd, I'd have my mind in 20 different places and that wouldn't work very well. So what I do is the, the night before I look when my tea time is, I look at like what the weather is going to be like so I can. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. <laughs> It, it, yeah, it is pretty frustrating. And that puts you in a worse spot, too. Like, it's harder to move up when you're constantly starting at a time that's really bad for you, yeah. um, which is fine. Like, that is what it is. Like, I'm not going to sit there and complain about that, but it does make it more rough when you're already starting, like, at the bottom, at the... Like, I would rather it be windy and later because mm -hmm. I'm not a morning person at all, and I know other people prefer it the other way around, and they like it to be early, more power to you. But personally, I would rather because when when we had our round, it started out not windy, but it very quickly got windy. So that was actually harder to deal with because we were like, wait, is it windy or is it not windy? And so it was like constantly changing from being windy, not windy to windy. And so that actually made it more difficult. Um, and then on top of that, it was in the 40s when I got there. So it, I'm tiny, like I don't stay warm super well. So anyway, the night before I'm preparing for everything, I'm figuring out, okay, like when do I need to be at the course um, to be able to warm up adequately? And this isn't just warming up as in throwing drives and putting. This is warming up as in when it's that cold, a lot of times I'll go on a jog. I will stretch for longer. I will do all these things. I didn't even really have time to do everything I wanted to even. Um, and it was funny because a lot of comments I got about things were like, oh, 45 minutes should be plenty enough time. It's like, you have no idea how quickly 45 minutes pass, yeah. especially when you have to be worried about a five minute two stroke penalty if you're there late that has already been enforced and we still don't have clearly defined bounds for this very extreme rule. Yes. And I and men I'm not the only person who's had this problem. There've been many people that have had this problem. In fact, um a girl just she she also got the two the two stroke penalty on day 1 of Texas States and she went back the next day to talk to Bill because she was like, "Okay, explain to me exactly what I need to do in order to make sure I don't get this penalty." And it was still vague. She still didn't know what the the exact rules were like and when i was stroked i didn't know that i was doing anything wrong i didn't know that where i was wouldn't be okay for the round you know so like i i'm totally fine if like i'm actually late i yeah. stroll up but i had been there right by hole one for over 20 minutes i had watched the card before it, it wasn't like I, I was just like, oh, la, la, la. Like, I'm not planning well. I'm not planning my time. No, I was there. I was ready. I had stopped putting. I was talking to another player. So, like, I was a tiny bit distracted and not right at the tent. But I also didn't know that that would penalize me, you know. And, and then we already went over that, like, last time in terms of, like, preventing the announcer from calling me over. And at that point, like... I get it. If you do break the rules, 
but I didn't know that I was breaking the rules. So like there should be a sign in sheet or there should be very clearly defined, like you have to be within this roped area or something or have a sign in sheet or have a sign in sheet and then call out people's names. And if they're right in the warm up area next by, then that's fine. As long as they like come over, you know, make, make it something to where it's, it's like you're trying to be on the side of players, especially if they're actually there and they're actually in the area. So anyway, that's just, that's a different issue, but it did come into play this weekend because I was determined, okay, I'm going to be at hole one at least 10 to 15 minutes before my tea time, because I'm hey. not going to get in that situation again. They are not doing a good job of actually defining this rule and what needs to be done, and I'm suffering for it, and I did suffer for it, and it ruined a, like, effectively ruined a round for me, and gave me at a minimum of two extra strokes, and yeah, I don't want to be in this position again, so that takes off 15 minutes, so if you say I have 45 minutes, I have 30 minutes, 30 minutes is nothing, nothing, like, and then also to have to worry about a shuttle and getting there and everything. Like, no, I don't want to have to worry about that. And and a person made a, a comment um, on, on one of the Facebook posts and said that Paul Macbeth made a video at one point that said that he likes to get to the course a minimum of two hours before his tea time. Two hours. We're talking mm -hmm. about... Paul Macbeth. So I'm sorry that obviously I'm not the only person who wants to have plenty enough time. Even if I'm not actively warming up the whole time, I want to be there. I want to be present. I yes. want to get my mind in the mindset of getting ready for the tournament. And people are like, well, you're, you're like, you suck and you're not doing well and your rating is low. It's like, who cares? My rating, like, I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do now in order to get to that place. Not very many people get to that place. You you can't say, oh, okay, well, just, like, don't worry about it. You don't need to prepare like other people need to prepare. No, I need to prepare myself now for what's going to happen in the future. I need to have a, a, a warm-up that I'm happy with, that I'm consistent with, especially if it's cold, because that really, really impacts... My, my game especially and i'm sure it impacts a lot of people's game if uh, if the weather is a lot colder um so that was a factor in when i needed to get there the it being a lot colder it being in the 40s when i arrived so what happened is i arrived at the course so i already saw i was like well the shuttles aren't running i need to be able to be at the course and practice so to me it was like this is extremely reasonable like who in the world would not be like, yeah, that's, that makes sense. Like, okay, that you, you have an early tea time. You need to be at the course earlier to warm up. Like, I didn't want to have to, other people were like, okay, well, it's a good substitute to warm up out, warm up elsewhere. But that's not a good substitute because especially with how cold it was, you warm up at a different location, even if it's three minutes away, that I'm going to get really cold. The, the shuttle buses, actually, most of them were pretty cold. So I'm going to try to warm up somewhere else, worry about like shuttle buses, get on the shuttle bus, get cold, get to the next course, have to start everything over again, start the mental prep. Like that's just not, that's not what I as an athlete should have to do. I'm paying more money than the people that have tour cards because I pay $50 extra every single event in order to get the tour pro card uh, amenities and you know extra things that's what they decided to do um i guess like last year or something like that um and so to say well play better you you like you don't matter because you're not you don't have a high enough rating that's ridiculous well i'm like i'm certainly not going to it's going to certainly make it way harder to do that if at every step i have to fight my way to have fair treatment you know I'm not asking for anything ridiculous. I'm just asking to be able to have the same amount of practice time before my round at the course as just about every other card has, you know. But instead, um, I was faced with 
very combative people that did not want to listen to me at all. And, and I wasn't being rude at that time. I wasn't like, no, this is ridiculous. Like I never did that the whole time. I stayed very calm. I was like inside, I was like extremely frustrated and upset, but I was very actively staying calm. I was like, Hey, like, you know, I'm just trying to get like practice time in. I was trying my very best to like reason with these people and it did not matter what I said. I, I could say, you know, right. It didn't, it didn't matter was trying to call me I was in the wrong I shouldn't be there um and and I was actually the first person that arrived there was nobody else that was on site when I got there and that's probably the reason why like I was able to get in a little bit easier but my problem was that I went back to my car um a couple times that I probably shouldn't have done that and then they 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 like approached me and were like hey are you a player like you can't be here you can't be there and then I tried would try to explain the situation and say hey like the shuttle buses weren't running when I needed to get here and so um you know I parked here like can we can like for tomorrow can we have like the one guy didn't even listen to me at all like he didn't care what I said he looked like angry <laughs> at me he looked like he wanted to punch me or something I don't think he did but you know he he was like no you can't be here tomorrow like don't park here tomorrow and I like I like and there was no talking to him so I didn't really say a lot and then the other guy I talked to um for longer um was was like no no this is fair like this is what everyone else has to do and I I said well no like everyone else that has a later tea time can get here longer before their tea time because the shuttle bus is running an hour and a half two hours before their tea time so they're right. able to be here and he was like no no like that's then then that's when he said like it wasn't fair on the shuttle bus drivers and like i talked to four of the shuttle bus drivers have really awesome conversations with them and um they were super happy to be there like they were just glad to be there to be able to help out they were glad to be able to talk to the players like this mm -hmm. one lady i talked to for like i don't know 10 minutes or something and she was super sweet and she was from out of town, like she wasn't even in the area and she had heard about this and she's like, yeah, like I'd love to go there and I'd love to like drive these players. Um, so it's funny because you had so many people who were, who were excited to be able to help the players out and be there for them and they were volunteers and they were being so amazing. So I just want to say like, thank you to, to those, vol like all of the volunteers for wanting to be there, but people who... Like, I feel like if someone would have been like, hey, you know, like players with the earlier tea times, you know, they may want to be there an hour and a half, two hours early. Can we have one person, you know, that's there a lot earlier to be able to bring these players in? I bet you that these shuttle bus drivers would have been like, yeah, like, no problem. Like, that's early. But, yep. you know, we want to do what we can for these players <laughs> to make sure that they're there when they need to be there. Um so, yeah, and I, I also want to point out that there was plenty enough parking on site to be able to have the players park there, but the TD specifically did not want the players to park there, and apparently that is how it had been done every other year. And so, and I guess he was unwilling to change that at all or budge on it at all, even for earlier tea times that wouldn't have shuttle buses um running at an early enough time and it, obviously early enough time for me i also will say that there were later people that teed off later than i did that were arriving at the very first shuttle bus time so obviously there are other people that would have been there earlier if there were early like like say they had been those same people had been on my card obviously they would have wanted to have an earlier shuttle bus. Um, yeah. And I know a lot of people that need extra time, but it honestly, it doesn't matter. Even if I were the only person that was like, Hey, I need an hour and a half, then that should be enough. That should be enough to be like, yeah, like we, we want as an athlete, you're trying to, you know, do your job. You're, you're doing your best to prepare, to prepare for this round, especially in the cold. Like you're not given very good circumstances, but like, I'm trying to make the best of it. I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation and then to be like fought on it so hard and to have like no understanding. There was no desire to like say Hey man, yeah, like I, I, I understand that. Like you, you need to be here earlier. So let's like let me try to talk to somebody and see if I can, 
I can fix this situation or, or if we can figure out something to, to help you out. Like, even if that's, you can't park here, I'd be totally fine with that. Like, okay, cool. Like I, I gave two reasonable solutions and I ended up talking to the assistant tour director that evening on the phone for a while. I explained the whole situation. Um, he seemed very understanding and like, yeah, like that all makes sense. And went through everything, talked for a long time. He sounded like things were changed. And then he went over step by step what was happening. He was like, yep, so the shuttle buses will be running at 630. And players are not allowed to park at the parking lot. And I was like, okay, so that's the same as yesterday. And like, he didn't really say anything. And and then I was like, okay. And like, I didn't, I think he thought that I was going to sit there and like argue with him about it or something. But I was like what am I supposed to say? You know, yeah. obviously I've made like, I've made it clear that this is what I need as a player, as an athlete, this is what I need to prepare, especially when it like, especially when it's that cold. Again, the conditions, like the time I need is very different if it's 60 or 70 degrees, you know, if it had been warmer, 630 would have been more okay but it wasn't it was very cold and even if you move the time to just an hour later it was so much nicer like so 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 much nicer much warmer conditions like i my body doesn't handle the cold very well so like i need to account for that and i need to be able to be at the course so my needs were very clearly expressed. I talked to the two guys that were not very kind at all. And I don't, and I, and I want to make it clear because I don't want to like villainize people because people, even if someone does something that's really not great to me, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are a terrible person. Right. I'm a person and I do not great or terrible things sometimes because I'm human and I'm not perfect. I'm not an angel. I'm also not a villain. I do my best to be kind to people and to do what I believe is best and most loving in the world. That's kind of my goal. And I don't think that there are very, there aren't very many people out there that are just like malicious and terrible and like trying to be mean or trying to be bad. But what these two guys ended up doing was very terrible and was very bad. And it very negatively impacted me and showed their lack of concern for me as a player, for me as a nobody who didn't matter. And it was extremely disrespectful and extremely hurtful as like a female player having these earlier tea times and then not having any accommodations that were fair across the board, you know, and I tried to explain that there was that. So, so I want to say that like, there are a lot of amazing people in the disc golf pro tour, so I don't want to say like, Hey, every the disc golf pro tour, everyone's terrible. Like, no, there are great people in the disc golf pro tour and I appreciate what they do in their work. Um, but what I was shown on Friday was a very terrible representation of like that. And they were representing the disc golf pro tour and that was unfortunate. And I really hope and then even afterwards, the representation was not good because even after my complaints were expressed and I, my reasoning was given and I was even told like, yeah, like that makes sense. Like I talked to to Max, which he was very kind, very good at listening. Um, and I don't know if I made that clear in my video, but like, thank you, Max, yes. for like listening and being very affirming and like, hey, yeah, that makes total sense. Like I get what you're saying. Um, Phil did the same thing, you know, very understanding. But then, of course, nothing was changed for the next day. So that makes me feel it's like, okay, well, you're understanding what I'm saying. You're understanding where I'm coming from. But then you're not actually doing anything to fix the problem, to change the problem. But I bet you if it was someone like Kristen or Paul or someone that was like more important, you would jump on it right away and make sure that that was like taken care of because you'd be like, yeah, that's unfair. That's not fair for you at an earlier tea time. Like it's irrelevant what my rating is. It's irrelevant what my placement is in the tournament. It's irrelevant how I did in round one, which round one was certainly impacted by all of that. It's still on me. Like it's my responsibility to handle stress and situations, but it's just unfortunate that the last two disc golf pro tour events that I've played, I've had to deal with situations that like shouldn't have happened. You know, like I shouldn't have had to have fought for myself. Like 
just to have to do that over and over again. And as a female playing disc golf, it happens over and over and over and over and over again. And people can say like, no, it doesn't. You're just like entitled or whatever. You can think whatever you want. I'm not, I'm, I'm not being unreasonable. If you talk to a lot of other women, they will tell you the same exact thing. It is very frustrating that it happens. And I'm not saying that this, this instance happened just because I was a woman. I think it more so happened because I wasn't important um, to them. I like, I know I am important, but, um, and, you know, and maybe they were very like narrow minded, just like, no, this is our job. Like, we're not going to listen. But at some point you, if you're going to have that job and you're going to be, you know, working for players and we're the, like the product technically, even if we're not making you any money, we're still, we're still the product, then, you know, take care of us, take care of us, treat us well, let us know that, Hey, like we matter. And, you know, I've had some other FPO players say like, just, just go to them, just tell them, you know, what's going on. And it's like, well, I've done that, you know, and I've gotten no response or no good response or no, action being done like to me if you say hey like I totally understand that and I get that I get where you're coming from like and I'm sorry that happened and I was even told like by the guy who was like yeah I talked to the the guys and I told them it was like yeah, after that happened you should just let it go you know instead of because I was like multiple times they came up to me probably like three or four times was like you shouldn't be here like you shouldn't be like do this and I was sitting there trying to like so I ended up spending a lot of my warm-up time that ended up not being warm-up time trying to like explain the situation and what happened and they were just giving me a lot of trouble for it and not not uh, not trying to understand and not trying to like find a solution for me or try to like talk to someone who could find a solution for me or could or whatever or just saying like or maybe it should have been like hey my round is gonna start soon let's like get back to this you know or something or like let's you know just let it go so I can focus and do like what I need to do before the round um, so anyway, he did say that like, yeah, that, that shouldn't have happened. But, you know, I did try to, to go to people that, you know, should be able to have control to do something and nothing was done. So say, say maybe this person didn't have control, like wasn't able to actually get the shuttle drivers or maybe just didn't want to, um, Um, <clears throat> doesn't sound like they thought one yeah. person was justification they, enough they to change the shuttle sh schedule schedule <laughs> schedule. They weren't paying the shuttle dri mm -hmm. drivers. The shuttle drivers were. Um, I, if you were here earlier, then I mentioned that the shuttle drivers were volunteers, and they were very, very happy and excited to be there. And it, it definitely seemed like to me. Obviously, I don't know. I didn't ask any of them, but it definitely seemed like they would have been, you know, happy. Hello. Um, that seemed like they would have been happy to accommodate at least one of them to be there earlier to mm -hmm. make sure that I I had as much time as other players had to be able to warm up at the course. See, my, my thought was, is, I mean, you need a, to me, I mean, I thought you, you should be allowed to be there at a minimum six o'clock. That gives you almost an hour and a half. I yeah. mean, that, that, that was my thought. I was like, even though you're going to be there trying to warm up in the dark, which I find to be ridiculous, but, I, I mean, to me, that's my thought. It's like they should make it so you get a minimum of an hour to hour and a half. Yeah, I think a minimum of hour and a half, but I think if someone needs more, then mm -hmm. that should be figured out. So if you're mm -hmm. going to have tea times that are that early, you know, and, and someone needs to be able to be there early, earlier than figure that out. But, yeah. you know, after I explained the situation mm -hmm. and like why I needed to be there early and why I was there early, um, there was like, and this is later on in the day, there was expressed understanding and like, hey, that makes sense. But then nothing was done to change it. So at that point, it's like, you know, as, as a person trying to take care of the players, I would have been like, well, let's like find someone who can like pick her up at that time, you know, or whatever or mm -hmm. pick them up and some people were like well couldn't your like husband drive you there it's like he was working on friday you know he wasn't cat he doesn't ca usually caddy for me on fridays because he works mm -hmm. and um and also <laughs> someone was like oh if you need to get there that early uber there it's like 
I'm already paying a lot of money and it all that I'm doing is very expensive and I shouldn't have to pay for my ride to get to the course with enough time to be able to practice and get ready. And it's also a mental thing. It's like having enough time and peace of mind at the course where you can get in the right mental yeah. state to, um, to um, start the round and prepare and all of that. And that's not unreasonable. And the people who have been making me feel like it's unreasonable, shame on you. And I don't think that's very kind, you know, like if I, if again, if, one of the top pros in the world says that they need to be there um, two hours early, which some have top in the world, like won multiple world championships are saying they want to be at the course two hours in advance. Then me saying that I need at least an hour and a half, I don't think is very unreasonable. But even if a pro didn't say that, like even if that's what I need, um, to prepare, then I should be able to get, have a way to get to the course. You know, there was mm -hmm. parking at the course. They just didn't want us to park at the course. So it's like, okay, if you're on, if there's not a way to get the shuttle buses there earlier, then let earlier tea times park at the course. But it was almost like this, um, like uh, a stubbornness and an unwillingness to change what they've done every year because, oh, well, you shouldn't need this much time. Like, how is it your place to tell me how much time I need to prepare? Even if I say I need three hours, if I need three hours, who cares? Like, if I need to be there, if I have to be there in the dark, say, like, I start running or I start stretching in the dark, like, I want to be there three hours early, then I should be able to be there three hours early. Mm-hmm. And if that means allowing people to park at the course, then do that. And then if you are so determined to not allow the players to park at the course, okay, well then provide a way. Either the shuttle buses, find someone else, reach out, be like, hey, we have a situation. A player really needs to be there this early. Can we have someone there at the pro lot early to be able to drive her over? There are a lot of ways to fix problems. I have run events before. I've not run a disc golf pro tour event, but I have run other even not disc golf related events many times in my life. I did it a lot in college. I was president of organizations. I did a lot of organizing. I know what goes into events and you can figure out a way to like fix the problem. And I brought the problem before I was like, Hey, here, this is what I need. And then the ball was just completely dropped. Yeah. All right. You ready to jump into the round? Who has a really, really rough round. <laughs> yes. So, so first of all, I didn't really get to, um, practice the way and warm up the way that I needed to because I was dealing with not not uh like parking and what needed to be done I did end up parking on site for round one but you know they were like you're gonna have to park off site for the next day I was like okay well you know hopefully we can do the shuttle buses the guys I talked to were like no we're not going to change those times but which of course they ended up not so started the round and um you have the list of people for round one. Uh, was, you were on, on round was, one. I remember it was Nina, it was Cadence, and it was Anna. Anna. Anna Penter, Nina Guerrero, and Candace Burge. Yes. So I had played with Candace maybe only once. It was at NAGGT the year she won and I may have only been the final nine that I, that I played with her. And then Nina, I never played with Nina, but I've known her for a good while. And then I'd never played with Anna. Um, she's super sweet. Um, and it was awesome to get to play with her for a little bit the second round. Um, so great card mates. Um, yeah, it was just a, a rough, a rough start. What can I say? It was kind of like, it, it felt like, a continuation of from um the practice round where my the practice round the day before um where my drives didn't feel very solid um things weren't clicking as well and um there was a lot of stress around like what happened that morning um it just none of it felt good at all and um I'm definitely like more of an empath so people's 
opinions and things that they do and their feelings and their energy directed towards me can really impact me. Um, so I have to def constantly like work on that and make sure it, it doesn't matter. And, and I've been doing a good job with that, with all the, the comments online and stuff. It's like, I, I know that these, these, these people, their keyboard, keyboard warriors, um, can say whatever they want. It doesn't really bother me. Um, let me say one thing right quick. It's cadence. My bad. Cadence bird. Cadence. Not, uh, not Candace. It's cadence. That's it, on yeah. me. Uh, thank, Luke, thank you for bringing that to my attention. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I interrupted. I just want, I want to correct that. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I, I don't have like the round before me. I know it, it felt really bad. What was the hole that I got a nine on? That was rough. That was, um, 14, 755 yard par four or par five, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, so that is a really tough hole. Um, ideally you want your drive to be far up the fairway that then you have a nice look at a very narrow, like small landing zone mm -hmm. that sets you up for your drive across the pond. Um, it was very, very much a headwind. Oh, I know what your is now. Say that again. I, I was trying to think in my head which hole it was. When you said you drive across the segments across the fairway, I mean, across the pond, I was like, because yeah. that's the one's got all those trees and you got this narrow gap. Yeah, to, very to get narrow gap. That. Okay. Yeah, so you go across the pond one direction and then hole 15, you go back across the pond to like an island. It's an island hole across the water. Um, so really tough, really tough. A lot of people went OB on that one. Um Anyway, so my first drive, I don't even, I'm trying to think what hole it would have been. Maybe, two, I don't know, but Own was there on whatever hole is coming back from hole 14. So hole 14 is going one direction and mm -hmm. then to the right, like fairly far to the right where you don't really want to land. Um own and all of them with their camera crew were coming and I <laughs> I threw my disc and and I was I'm pretty sure I was the last one throwing because like I said I wasn't doing very well and um I saw everyone else drive and it didn't seem like it was extremely windy but as soon as I threw my mob it just turned right over went really far to the to the right and um was pretty much dead center in the fairway of the other hole that own and all of them were on in the camera crew. So I was just like, oh, Hey, you know, how are you guys doing? <laughs> own, own like waved at me and she's like, Hey, I was just like, okay, let me get out of your way. <laughs> so, um, I flicked out of the way and I was still kind of like pin like right up against the tree line, but sort of pinched off. So I needed a drive, um, to do kind of an approach shot to get in that landing zone still on hole three on throw three and I pushed it a little long. So I was kind of pinched off and I, I sh definitely should have just laid up at that point, even though it was only, you know, like 30, 40 feet or something um, or less, but I didn't, I was like, I have a throwaway disc. I'll like, just try to go, go for it. But I shouldn't have done that. I, I should have just laid up and then tried to go across Um but instead, I went OB, and then next one, I threw a cross, and I think it still went OB again, just barely. Um, I can't remember exactly what happened. The whole round is sort of a blur, and, and also, I think I was starting to, like, kind of get my headache at that point, too. Um, well, that so, would do it. <laughs> yeah, so I ended up with a nine <laughs> on that hole, which was very rough, and defeating and then to come back um I thought there was more of a headwind but I also just threw my disc a little nose up and it did not have a chance at all and I lost one of my favorite drivers my star mamba it's yellow and I never got that one back I also never got my TD back it was a purple TD that went in the water that was for my practice round um I did get back my wave um yeah, but I didn't get back, which was surprising because all of the women told me, like, oh, I've never left a disc here. They do a really good job of, like, finding the disc. But I actually, I, I, I didn't go to look for my disc until after the round that I caddied for on 
Sunday, so day the final day, and neither of those discs were there that I could see. So, um, yeah, it was sad to sad to lose those discs. But anyway, the nine was obviously the worst, um, the worst hole um, for me. But it was just a lot of like really silly things, like getting bogeys on holes that are very easy pars like I would I would put the di like there were a couple times I think I put the disc like 10 15 feet from the basket and then I missed the putt um it was it was definitely a rough day um and then to get that 850 rated round um was was bad and then of course more fuel for people to be like ah oh, you suck and so like your opinion doesn't matter <laughs> Well, let's get a whole, uh, Which just whole is nine. more funny for me. It's more funny for me because I'm like, I know that's so untrue that it doesn't even mm -hmm. bother me. I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to keep playing my game. Tell me about hole nine. Hole nine. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> yes, yeah, so that was my, my only birdie, right? Yes. So I used the same disc through the same as that throw both of my practice rounds and my tournament round, and it landed the same exact place every single time. So my first practice round, I first threw my green grace, which I just recently got. I got at the flex start in Florida at Champions Point um, from Tyler there. Uh, he does like dynamic discs, and I think he was he was running like the, the flex start, and then I think the tournament that weekend. Um maybe um anyway i got that from him and it ended up i have a, a purple grace with kind of like a purple it's like halo sorry grace and um that one is more stable and has been in my bag for a while then i got the green one that looks exactly the same like same run also halo thing but it's like teal and it's a lot more flippy so i threw that one first um on the practice round one and it was still really good but it was like edge of circle one kind of like kind of it was a tough putt for me it was like a tough stance there was like foliage in the way um and then my I threw one more drive and it was with the the purple grace and I put it like 10 15 feet from the basket and then I did the exact same thing on Thursday and then I did the exact same thing in the round on Friday so it was really cool to be able to do that to to uh have a hole where you had a game plan, you approached it, it was a, a flick shot and um, did the same exact thing every single time. And then I birdied it um, every time. Well, technically I didn't birdie it the first round because I had to take my first drive, which um, I missed the putt from like edge, of, uh, I don't know, middle edge of circle one uh, off the fairway. Cause there are, there are trees and stuff pretty close to where the, um, the basket is. So yeah. And then I got that birdie, and I was really glad that I at least got that one birdie. <laughs> and I pretty hole? much parked the hole. Like, I, 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 I threw it like like Kristen threw it. My, uh, it was pretty similar. I wonder if she used the grace as well. Which hole is it that is the, um, the par three over the water with the little island green? Oh, that's hole 15. So that's the one after mm -hmm. 14. So you're you're talking about the one that it's like across the water and goes a little. Um, it's it's an island green. I do know that it's got like it's like a almost like a half moon green. Yep, that's fifteen. Because um, that one, uh, gosh, was it last year or year before last? Um, man, I can't remember who it was. Someone laid up short, and in the first round, and then they went over. And then exactly. they did the same thing the second round. In the second round, they were like, oh, you can't do that. That's OB. You have to go over the water. They didn't call them on the first round. That would stink. Yeah. They're like, I guess they were like, I can't throw it yeah. that far. So it's going to lay up. <laughs> yeah, I never. That seems odd that that would be the case. Yeah. That they wouldn't have an area that you that is OB. Or that is inbounds on the other side. I mean, it's just it's just it's just on that. You just have to hit that island. Huh? Yeah, I'm kind of curious about that now. I, mean, <laughs> it, I, mean, it's, I, I can't remember who it was, but the first round they they said, well, they didn't call it, and the second round they called it. So, yeah, 
Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it definitely seems like, because I, I know that there, there were people that didn't have a lot of distance mm -hmm. and like, even their like max power would like barely make it over the line on the other mm -hmm. side. And I feel like with the distance, it would, with that distance, it's not like a terrible distance, but it can, it can really get to you, especially with needing to like turn the disc over or wh however you do it. I am really surprised that, that there wouldn't be an inbounds on the other side. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I would, because if it's me, I can't throw that far. I, I'd be like, I, I'm shooting three from the, uh, <laughs> from the, from the area down there. The, the, uh, what, what they call it area, the drop zone from the drop zone. Yeah. The drop zone area. I would just gone straight to that. It's like, I'm not throwing a disc in the water. Cause that's, what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So I threw my Mako three champion Mako three right across, put it like not too far from the basket and then got my, my bogey on that hole. Nice. Uh, he's on last round, uh, Kristen and, uh, someone else on the final card, they pulled him way over when, when got under lifted, just, Took it off to the to the left. Uh, so they both missed it, but yeah, that was <laughs> that was what I was worried about happening. That it was going to take it um, far, like the the wind was going to catch it and was going to take it to the right and flip it over. But that is definitely not what happened. But it was on me. I I didn't throw it very well. So was there any other highlights or or low lights on that first round? There were so many low lights. It was rough. Like I do, I mean, I can't really look at the round cause I mean, every round that Andy's with me, I have videos mm -hmm. and I can, and that helps me a lot. Like it's awesome to have Andy there recording everything. When I go over and look at my rounds and why I can like watch my form and I can see what I'm doing and I, and I get, it, it helps me to be able to evaluate my game and work on it and get better. But of course the first round where Andy, Andy's working wasn't there. So I can't really right. look through it. I mean, I could walk through each hole, but uh, nothing really sticks out 18. I was pretty, I was really happy with how I played it. Um, I had used the disc that I lost on hole 15 to make it across just bare, like in my practice round one, um, I got the birdie on hole 18 and, um, I just, I was like three feet probably from the OB. I got across everything to the other side. I was really excited about it. Um, and then I made the putt, which was like edge of circle one. Um, so that was really exciting, but then definitely with how I was feeling on Friday, I was, there was no way I was going to try to go for that. Um, the same as hole seven, I definitely didn't. I, I wasn't trying to, to go for that one. Um, I mean, 18 uh, was, is um, three forty five. Yes. Wow. So I, so I got, I put it like 28, 30 feet from the basket on my practice round. I was pretty happy with that. And then I made the putt, but I was not trying to go for it, but I laid up and then I had a, a beautiful flick of like, where was it back and backhand approach shot that like hit the, I, I, I almost thought maybe it was going to go in. And I had a couple of those where um, I had some really good approach shots that um, almost went in the basket and almost got the a throw in birdie. Um, and then uh whole seven was kind of rough for me. So I, I did the same thing. Like in my practice round, my very first drive, I got it over across to the other side, although not by much. I was over maybe by again, like three feet or something like that. So it was, it was really close, um, which is nervy then when you have like, cr you know, crazy winds and trying to make sure you can do that. So I definitely laid up and then threw up the hill. That was fine. Then I did my approach shot and, um, every time in my practice rounds, I had juiced it too far and went too far past the basket, like to circle two past the basket. So, um, this time I was like, okay, I'm going to give it like less power. Um, but I didn't give it enough power. And so I was circle two still to go to the basket, you know, kind of looking downhill on that, um, on hole seven. And, rollaways are like there are a lot of holes in this course that rollaways are 
like very, significant very, roll away. Oh yeah, like very significant roll aways. And so I was, I took the Berg because usually the Berg, like it's kind of like a brick and it settles really well. And so I was mm-hmm. just going to pitch up and lay up and, you know, take my par. And I was going to be very happy with my par, which I actually did do on the second day because that was my next to last hole. So I got four and I was very excited about that. But anyway, I tried to lay it up and the Berg just went up on its side and rolled down the hill. <laughs> So it was really sad to just play the hole very well, be like, yeah, I got this, you know, going to take my par and run and then to have the disc roll down. But of course, you know, I was not the only one that that happened to. So it happened to a lot of people. Um, It was just unfortunate because I was really, you know, like I felt like it was a a really good approach shot. I didn't have any problems with it. And then it just kind of like like it was possessed, just went up on its side and just decided to roll down the hill. (laughs) I was like, okay, goodbye disc. Um, And then I kind of gave it like a light bid and um, then it sat down uh, beside the basket and then I put it in. So that, I definitely remembered that one on hole, hole seven. That was before my uh, two holes before my only birdie. All right. Let me ask you this. Yeah. I mean, obviously when you go, you know, you had the, um, the three birdies in a row, uh, was it last week? Week before last. Yes, the week before last. Um, so that would have been Texas so, States. So, I mean, obviously when you do that, mentally you're thinking, okay, I'm on my game. Let's go conversely. Because uh, we had the streak of one, two, three, four, five holes with bogeys and then a double. Like mentally, how do you, th- how do you not get in a funk? How do you say – Try to stay positive in those situations, thinking, trust the game, trust the game. I mean, tell, tell me about how that, like the, the opposite side of the good streak goes. Yes. So it's, it's, that's all the mental game side of disc golf. And one re- one aspect that makes any sport extremely difficult is like when you're doing poorly, how do you pick yourself up out of that? Um, And all I can say for me is that I'm just very intentional about it. Like I'm very intentional about my emotions and Mm -hmm. as they come up, I feel them and I experience them. And then I evaluate whether they're good or bad. And if I'm, I'm inevitably going to have bad negative feelings about, yeah. having like four or five bogeys in a row and then like a double bogey that's not fun at all yes um but as they come up i tell myself hey it's a part of disc golf this happens like even if you're playing way worse than what you normally play it happens i also knew that i was fatigued so i try to I try to evaluate it. I try to evaluate like why it's happening and if I can do anything in the moment to help it. And if I can't really do a whole lot in the moment to help it, like I'll always try to do something, you know, but say like whatever it is that I'm doing isn't helping or doesn't seem to be helping. Then my goal is to never give up, like never give up, never allow myself to get to the point to where I'm just like, Oh, like hands up. Like, I don't like I'm giving up. I don't care. Like to me, that's the only way that I fail and that I will truly lose is if I give up and around and I throw in the towel and I allow my emotions to take over and control me and my game. Um, And so with having something like a turkey and then having something like a lot of bogeys in a row. Um, I think part of the key is also staying like not getting too excited in the moment about the good things, like getting excited because I definitely don't want to take that away in the moment. And I was like very excited about the Turkey at the time, especially since it had been my first ever Turkey. But you know, after that it was still like, Hey, we still have like holes to play. We still have two holes to finish out in this tournament. Like let's focus on that. I mean, I didn't end up doing super well with that, but most of it was just like really dumb little things. And it is what it is. I didn't play like terribly or anything for the last two holes. Um, 
but really trying to just keep your head in the game no matter what. Keep your head in the game if you do well. Keep your head in the game if you do poorly. Um, and not allowing that to defeat you. And it does take training and control. That doesn't happen naturally. Because anyone who is an athlete or is, has any amount of like competitiveness in them is going to care about these things and is going to care about not doing well, not playing well. And so how, how can you control those often ex very strong emotions? Um, and another part of it, and we've talked about this before, is also I really care about the other players, the other people on my card. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to impact them negatively either because I know like energy impacts me a lot. So I don't want to impact them negatively. Um, and so that's another thing that I'm actively thinking about is, is like, how am I impacting and affecting the people on my card? How am I impacting myself? You know, um, and just trying to set myself up for success in terms of have being able to have a good time, even if I don't do well. And then also expectation wise, setting myself up in a good place. And that happens way before the rounds, you know, like, mm -hmm. because how easy would it have been for me the last two tournaments, you know, to be just completely defeated by the fact that I had such an amazing practice round beforehand. I mean, I shot an 11 down at, at Brock Park at Texas States, the one practice day that I had, and then to never shoot under par any of the rounds, you know, mm -hmm. I could look at that and be like, man, that's just total failure. Like what I'm like, what am I doing? And then to have a three down round, um, one of my practice rounds before Jonesboro, the very next disc golf pro tour event. And then, you know, to shoot a 16 over that could be very defeating. But, and, and although I do say that this whole weekend was not very great for me, you know, overall, especially with all the stuff that happened. Um, but I, th that's not going to like keep me down, you know, like that's just going to be, it's just another hurdle. It's just another round. I don't, I don't have, I don't, I haven't yet put any expectations on myself of, oh, if I have a practice round that was really good, then I need to shoot under par. Like I maybe have a goal to shoot under par, but it's not going to be a goal that if I don't meet it, then I'm just gonna, it's just going to put me out of like bend me out of shape, you know, or be like, oh, I can't believe that I did that. So yes, thinking about these things with yourself and talking through them is very beneficial. And, you know, even maybe being able to talk to someone else about um, your mental game and how, how you approach holes that are terrible or holes that are good. Um, I, it definitely, and we've talked about this before too, it definitely seems like Kristen Tatar does a really good, I probably said her last name wrong, does a really good job of, you know, regulating her emotions. She doesn't seem to get like overly excited about a lot yep. of things and around and she doesn't get overly like upset about things that happen. And I think that that helps to be able to have more of like an even keel mm -hmm. um, emotions throughout a round. And I'm, I believe will serve me well um, moving forward. And as I progress in my disc golf career. It, you mentioned her in the, the funniest video I've seen of her. It says, uh, uh, even kill. I mean, I, um, says Kristen Tatar has outburst and she does this. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, yeah, I cracked up laughing. I was like, that's hilarious. I think the funniest example of that ever is the videos that they made with James Conrad. <laughs> so funny it's like james conrad getting so upset and then he's just like darn it you know like yeah i saw him once I, like, like one of them he has the disc and he just kind of smacks it a little bit and like, oh i was like oh my gosh the rage <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is so funny uh okay round two um I, i've got to mention this because we talked about this last week week before last but lead card Four women from four different countries on lead card. I was like, that's that's where the tournament's going now. Very cool. Yep. We had uh, Kristen from Estonia, uh, Lucky 
uh, from Norway, Evelina from Finland, and this week it was Jennifer Allen on lead. Go, Jen. Good for yeah. you. So, awesome. I mean, she, I, I mean, I'd like her and own. They're not going to age. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's crazy watch them play like that, and then you know yeah. throw J.K. in there. She's not going to age. It's no, it's, it's very, amazing. Very watching impressive, that. very inspiring for mm -hmm. sure. Um. See. Okay. There's no reason to go into round two because you know that's you know we we hit that. Um, yeah. Round three. That was like round ra whole one. I'll just go over whole one. Like whole one, and this pretty much represents the entire round. I would throw and just be like blown away with where the disc went i was like wow my drive was fine like but that was pretty easy i was just laying up and then my second throw i just threw into the ob like i i was like i i didn't even know how it happened i was like how did i just throw my passion right into the OB? like the ob is pretty far from the basket <laughs> it was rough it was rough and that was pretty much how the rest of the round went and then my next shot was like off to the side, kind of in the rough and then had a good bit like straddle putt through the trees bid for the, to save like bogey, but I didn't even do that. So I ended up getting a double bogey on like the first hole and the round did not get a whole lot better. So, I mean, my thing is this, I mean, you can't keep your mind in it when you're in pain. Yeah. I mean, no matter where the pain especially like in your head, it's not going to work. I can yeah. ignore some things and mm -hmm. I have ignored some things, but when it's like that, there's mm -hmm. just nothing you can do. Like there, there was nothing I could do. And I was trying to like, keep it together. I was like, okay, you got this. Like, just keep pushing, keep trying. And I like my plan literally up until hole seven was that I was going to try to finish the round, mm -hmm. you know, even after throw, after throw, after throw being just terrible. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to finish this round. And then it kind of hit me like right before we were getting to round one and I kind of got to, started to get like a little emotional. Well, one, because I had felt like I was just trying to be strong and hold it in and like not allow, you know, the, the pain to bother me or hurt me as much, you know, just to be strong. And then it hit me that I started to realize that I had to drop, you mm -hmm. know, and so, um, yeah, it was difficult to me because like, I wanted to talk to my card mates and tell them like, Hey, you know, thanks so much for like playing with me, but like, I'm really like not doing well. I have to stop. And so I was like getting pretty emotional there because I like, I wanted to finish and I wanted to play with them. Um, but I also had a really, really awesome time. Um, just getting to see them play and like, Anne. Uh, she is a force like she's up and coming uh, and getting s better and better and better. And she has an arm on her. She can throw so far. Um, and so her and like her dad caddies for her and she's sick. And deputy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she she had some really fire. I think the final round she had like a or maybe it was even the second day. She had like a, a really good. Um, really good round and just some of her shots and yeah, she has, she has a lot of potential and it's going to be very exciting to see um, where her game takes her. Um, so, yeah. All right. Let's talk about um, caddying for Stacy Ronsley. Yep. So um, reached out to a couple of people cause I was like, well, um, my head was already starting to feel a good bit better Saturday evening. And then I was thinking like, Hey, even if my head hurts me terribly on Sunday, like I can caddy, you know? Um, so I was hoping for the best, which it, it ended up the only thing I really felt on Sunday as I woke up really nauseous. And then that went away in like an hour and a half or two hours. And I think eating helped some too. Um, and mm -hmm. the headache wasn't really there much at all. It was like a tiny bit and then it went away and it hasn't really come back since. Um, so got to, caddy for Stacy and um she yeah she had she had a rough time um but also um she's just coming I, back from an injury she's just First yeah she's, it back. But she had been off for like a month and a half so mm -hmm. a really long time you know and I think she was struggling with that like the understanding of 
you know, maybe you think like, okay, I'm going to get back in and it's just going to be like what it was when I left. But obviously it was not, there were certain things that, you know, weren't clicking and it, it was, it was definitely a, a tough round um, for her and just try to do my best as a caddy. And um, it was Missy Gannon, Stacy Ronsley, um, Kat Merch, and um, I just said her name. What's, what was the, do you remember who I told you was on that card? I knew who it was. Who is it? It'll come to me in a little bit. But anyway. Um, right, right after we get off, she went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not that you're not important that I don't remember your name. I just, how my brain works sometimes. But anyway, she, it was, uh, yeah, I was glad to be able to caddy for her. And I'm um, sorry she had, you know, a rough round and everything. And then afterwards, hung out for a little bit and um, tried to get my. It disc was Allie. Back. Allie Smith, yeah. Yes. Allie, Allie, so cool. Um, of course, Cat Merch. He's clearly not that cool if you don't remember. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Allie. I'm only kidding. <laughs> no, Allie's great. Allie's fiance, Mary. She's awesome too. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm Mary. Now, like, we both get to be caddies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, it, and it was, obviously, it was amazing getting to watch these ladies. And, you know, Kat had a, a rough round as well. But still, like, even yeah, when these ladies are Kat. having a bad round, it's still very impressive to watch them. And you can tell just the talent and the abilities that they have and the distance that they have and um, the the power and the touch. It was It was really cool getting to watch all of them. And I haven't followed a lot of, you know, the lead cards or things like that, just because I'm generally so exhausted myself, but then to be able to um, be right there and caddy for Stacy and watch these ladies, um, it really is, is, is very impressive and exciting to be able to do. And um, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's basically the tournament this week. Uh, a few things. First off, Kristen being Kristen basically just, dominated uh, again <laughs> yeah. I, I i posted um earlier the the week i was like when she's on there's no one close yeah i mean day one she just set herself apart and was mm -hmm. like hey guys i'm here you know like have fun fighting for a second <laughs> yeah and i i was like and and someone goes well well she's lost some this year i was like well okay she wasn't on on those weeks and I think last week, I think she said she um, uh, stepped on some red ants and her ankle was terrible swollen. Oh, yeah, really, really, really swollen. So, it's but bad. I mean, when she's on, it's it's her and own right now. And then there's a gap. There is. I mean, there's a lot of players that, you know, shuffle back and forth in there. But to me, it's those two. And then there's a gap. Yeah, I think a lot of it with, like Kristen and Owen, I mean, both of them, it's I like mental game is a really, really big aspect to that. Like they are amazing athletes. So they have that and they're very talented um, disc golfers, but they've also honed in and worked on their, their mental game really well. And their focus like during a round to be able to be that focused during, for an entire round to be able to, you know, shoot a 10, 40 something rated round to, to be able to do that in every single, um, I think Stat Mando just put out something today that I saw that all of the winners so far this year have had event averages over a thousand rated, wow. which is just insane. You know, mm -hmm. insane to think that that's, I mean, that's the level that you have to perform. You have to shoot an average of over a thousand rated to be able to win these FPO events, which is exciting. Really cool. Yeah. She struggled in the last round was only a, what does it say? 994. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still like amazing. It's yeah, funny. It's like that, she you struggled know, for like, oh, a wow, thousand, but still 994 is. It's, it's insane. It's crushing it. It's, it's destroying it, especially having like the power that these women have, like to be able to mm -hmm. shoot that well is, I mean, a lot of these holes are really difficult to get to. Like, I can't 
like I can't birdie them yet with my power very well, or I'd have to throw it in from like circle two or circle three, like we're, well, it's um, not really a throw in if it's circle two, but you, you know what I mean? Okay. Chad, if y'all have any questions, let us know. Cause uh, we're kind of getting toward the end now. Uh, yeah. A couple questions uh, I have is um, if you're, you know, cause you've been in groups of um, with three on a card, mm-hmm. what happens if one person was to drop out in that situation? Because they, they have to have a minimum of three on a card. So what would happen in that situation? They would have to have someone that's like an official or someone that they can designate that's on the card as the third person. So they wouldn't be playing. It's like a ghost, ghost following them, so to speak. Yes, exactly. Um, I've only had that happen one time. It was at college nationals in 2020. Two or was it 21? Yeah, 2022. Um, and it was for one of the team events and my, our team showed up. So it was two of us. And then the other team did not show up, which was the other two. And so they ended up having um, an FPO player that was there um, working the event that she walked with us for the round. Yes. And yeah, so I actually have had that happen one time before. So I always wondered about that. Um, okay, when you played hole 18, um, Holland on the last round, her tee shot cleared the the back uh, wall, cleared the crowd, and it was the, the spectators, and it was a good 50 feet past that. Wow. And, and then they said, that's not OB. How was that not OB? How is it not to be when you have an actual barrier there that it goes yeah. over? Yeah, no, that's been in a lot of tournaments because obviously they want to have areas where the spectators are, but they assume most of the areas that right. they mark is that um, they just assume that people aren't going to be throwing there. But yeah. um, obviously, Holland <laughs> was able to was... to to throw farther. So it's it, it often it is the case that it is OB, but that's not always the case. Okay. Um, I would not have guessed that on hole 18 i definitely would have assumed that throwing um past the signs and into the crowd Mm -hmm. would have been designated ob but um maybe they just didn't think that they needed to but yeah you know maybe they do need to (laughs) because her and evelina were tied for second um evelina hit a tree and it fell down in that little ob area where i guess the water is right there yep and then she threw, cleared everything. And I was like, how is that not OB? So uh, Holland ended up finishing, uh, I guess it was second because of that. And I was like, it is yeah, second that's or third. Awesome. I was like, how was that? But I was like, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Yep, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's up to whatever the PDGA or Disco Pro Tour or whoever it is that's deciding, you know, the OB yeah. lines. It's up I to I was like, I to, guess the TD to, just to said, yeah, let them And throw if they it. don't put it in the caddy book and it's not OB, then it's not OB. And yeah. And actually, it was this similar. So um, remember, hole 14 is the one where you go across the pond in the first place. Mm hmm. If you land on that island on hole 15 for hole 14, it's not OB either, apparently. That's what I was told anyway from the caddy book, which I was very surprised about as well, because that's also like blocked off, you know, with the the signs and everything. But um, we had a situation where someone hit like right up against the sign and was like right next to it. And she wasn't taking the meter from it. But then I was told, well, that's because it's not OB. So, it's, you know, you don't, hmm. you're not able to take the meter if it's not OB. So apparently someone could have just thrown on the green of hole 15 and it wouldn't have been OB. That's interesting. I mean, that yeah. doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yeah, that there, there makes was a one... little less. I, I don't understand that one, but Yeah. Because there's another one that, I mean, I feel like I'm picking on Holland now when I say this, but I'm not Holland, I promise. Um, <laughs> she threw one. It was so far right that it would have been OB on the 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 adjacent fairway. It would have cleared it. But they said, well, it's not on the caddy book, so it's not OB on this fairway. Yeah, like, I mean, that's-, that's true. It's true. If it's not, if it doesn't show that it's OB on that mm-hmm. hole, it's not OB. And it doesn't matter if it's OB on another hole. 
Okay. Uh, MPO, uh, a few things that I thought was really interesting. Um, first off, who decides the, uh, the cards? The cards, like round like one? The groups, like the groups, like each, each group, the, like the foursomes, you know, what time people go out the first round. I know at the second, th like after that, but the first round. Um, I think it's a combination. Uh, I believe the PDGA automatically generates, like has a program that automatically generates it. But then I'm pretty sure if the TV wants to go in and change that, they can. Okay. So probably the TD would be my my guess, I believe. And that's my understanding for most tournaments. I don't know if it's any different for like Disc Golf Pro Tour, but I still think that it's probably the case that the TD would have control over that and would be able to go in and make changes for round one um, mm -hmm. if, if they desire. Okay, guys, two cards in particular really yeah. hit me. <laughs> I know which one. What well, one of them is gonna be? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> all the Pauls. The all the Pauls. <laughs> <laughs> like, how funny would it have been? Like, who's up? It's Paul. <laughs> like, and the, all four of them just walk up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was like, Eulaberry, Macbeth, uh, Omen, and uh, Kranz. I was yeah. like, that's hilarious. Yeah. But the yeah, second one that got me was they had a card of uh, four lefties on it. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, someone told me that. I looked. I know it was Nathan Queen, Zach Melton, and doggone, I can't think of the other two. But I was like, "That's hilarious." Yeah, that's that's really interesting. That's kind of fun. I think that's sort of cool. You know, yeah. if, a, if a TD decides, okay, I'll go in and and do that. Um, uh, oddly enough, there were a bunch of cards that had nothing but righties on it. Yeah, that's really weird. Like that <laughs> never happens. It's rare. <laughs> um and then anthony barella uh what a comeback he had i mean yep. just throwing five miles every time just insane uh, i mean yep. the 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 final gosh was about seven holes or so him uh isaac robinson um ezra aderhold ben calloway calvin heinberg they had a battle that was fun to watch. <laughs> so, fun tournament, fun tournament. Yep. Huge congrats to both Kristen and to Anthony. Um, really cool. Anthony, his third, and then Kristen, her second. Just mm -hmm. we, we don't yeah. count her A tier that she just won. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, second Disc Golf Pro Tour. Yes. <laughs> I just thought I just thought that was that it was like people just ignore that, but she just won another one. But um yeah, yeah great still weekend. Counts. It's still it's still significant. It matters. Mm -hmm. I mean she's got something else she's got to carry home, so there you go. <laughs> um what's next for Ace Baby? Next is the Music City Open oh. in Nashville. So um we're back in Memphis. Clemens was one of them. One of the lefties on that card. Yeah, yeah. He says uh, Austin Turner. I'm not sure about that. Maybe. I'm not, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, so Music City Open. We're in Memphis now. It's only a few hours away. Um, was We're going to head that way tomorrow. And then um, I'm still just feeling like my body is not a hundred percent or even close to it. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Probably just everything catching up and how it's just been go, 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 go and really pushing my body. And, um, there for a while I had had 30 rounds in 30 days. So, you know, I was effectively playing around every single day. Um, and just catching up with me a little bit. So I've been taking a little bit more breaks. Um, and yeah, just trying to listen to my body and see how it goes. Um, I'm looking forward to Music City Open. I've played the Music City Open the last two years, but on the amateur side. In fact, I may still even play it this year on the amateur side. I plan to actually, I'm signed up. Um, but I've, I've actually won the amateur side the last two years. It's the only A tier that I've won 
two years in a row. So that's really cool. Um, so now to be playing it on the professional level will be really exciting. I actually thought about going to that and then I realized that's a long drive. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I was like, can they put something in Bristol? That would definitely help me out. Yeah. So Andy is really familiar with that area. He actually is from and has spent spent a good bit most of his life, I would say, in uh, Mount Juliet. So not too far away in um, near Nashville. Um, and the Music City Open was started by I can't remember exactly who, but Andy actually um ran it help was one of the main people that helped run it like the third or fourth year I think it it ran um and so he's um it's really cool I think for him to be able to go back and see just you know where it's where it's come and um and I'm sure they did a, a really great job with it so Andy's done a lot of um he's he's helped run or run a lot of tournaments as well so um that's kind of his stomping ground is Nashville so um, I'm picking Chris Dickerson because he seems to always win in Tennessee. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> I did not know that. Well, I, I may have just made that up. I don't know. You had to call me on it. Somebody yeah. actually did a um, a uh, survey thing on like I I didn't even know who they were. Um, I wasn't following them, but they tagged me in a survey about the Jonesboro Open. So there were like, I don't know, five or six questions. And one of the questions was who had the highest win percentage out of the two lowest FPO rated players and the two lowest MPO players. And I was the winner. So hey, that was kind of fun. <laughs> there we go. You know what? We got to win. And we se we'll cel celebrate the wins, you know. Exactly. You cel like make your own wins. Make your exactly. own wins when, even when you're not winning in that way because – you you're not going to be actually winning tournaments all the time. And so keeping, you know, a, a strong mental game in spite of that is important. And um, Neptune disc also uh, made sure everyone knew you were playing this week, by the way. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. It was an amazing post. Um, shout out to Neptune disc. They're mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and they made a beautiful, beautiful graphic. It was sad that <laughs> I ended up dropping the tournament, but thank you so much for the, um, the, the really cool, awesome graphic and for the support. And then also they shared, um, this podcast on their story tonight, like after I, I posted it. So thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm also from Virginia, awesome. Neptune, just saying. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and by the way, they posted a thing on there. Uh, we do have the link below so you can go over to Neptune, put in ACE, and uh, I think you got a discount for it. Yep, I believe so. So there we go. And if you want to check it out, them. some great, great discs. They don't have very many discs. They have four discs, but mm -hmm. really great discs. I definitely love all the three new molds that they um, they came out with this past August. So they haven't even been out for that long. But yeah, um, check them out. And if you want to uh, support Rebecca, we've got some discs. So go over to uh, Facebook or Instagram, send her a message, and she will tell you how to get these discs because I can't wait to chuck some of them. You know what? I might just yeah. leave them on the wall because I got the one right there. So they're Dimax. I have the Pure Fuse Tursus Diamond and Trespass. And I have run out of the diamonds in my design, but that's the only one I believe so far that I've run out, but I'm pretty sure I will run out of a couple more here very shortly. Yes, the diamond and the pure was very popular. I got more of the pures than anything else, but I didn't get more of the diamonds. I didn't realize that they would be, the diamonds were about as popular as the pure. So um, those, those have been the first things to run out. Um, Todd says, but I do yeah. have the diamond in this design. I think there's two left. I'm just gonna let you know that apparently, uh, Becca is a country music singer. <laughs> I don't usually sing country, but I can. <laughs> if heaven ain't lot like Dixie, I don't I... want to go. <laughs> I do um, really like Taylor Swift, but I don't know if she really counts as country. So, 
Man, I thought we were friends because I really don't like Taylor. No, I, I literally don't know any of her music, to be quite honest. Yeah. I, I know she was uh, at football games a lot this year. Yes. Yes. She was very popular at the, the red football games. <laughs> yes. Um, I got a birdie with the Lotus Trust Pass. There you go. Nice. That's awesome. Nice. So that's all we got this week. Next week, we will be from uh, Knoxville. Nashville. Nashville. Yes, Nashville. Don't go to Knoxville. You won't see her. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Anything else before we roll? Not that I can think of. We're already past two hours. It seems yeah. that that's more of our time than <laughs> Yeah, I, I literally said this won't saying. be a very long one this week. Yeah, no, there was definitely a lot that happened, even though I feel like there was more that happened this week than a lot of other weeks. So, yeah, but huge thanks to everyone who's been supportive of me and um, believes in me and is following along on my journey. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I got a lot of love and support about, you know, stuff that happened this past week. And so thank you for that. Um, and yeah, and if you're still watching, then thank you for staying and and watching this whole time. You're awesome. Yeah, thank you. And everybody also understand if you didn't have the time to stay, um, but also really appreciate those who were able to stay for the whole time. I know Todd has been uh, very, uh, very involved every single time, and so thank you, thank you, Todd. Yes, me and, me and him, we message each other back and forth too. Yeah. And of course, Andy as well. Andy has watched every single time and has uh, participated. Uh, Anthony, I mean, uh, Andrew is my, what, third favorite fan? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but again, everyone in the comments, we always appreciate it. You know what? Let me, where is this at? And thanks to the newcomers. Uh, thanks for know, being uh, here. Andy, thank you for giving me a heart emoji. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and that may not have been for me, but we, we definitely appreciate it. And um, I, I'm having a blast doing these and I, I'm hoping you're having as much fun as I am. It's it's really been good for me. It's honestly, it's, it's helpful for me to be able to go over what's happened again and to be able to talk about it. I think it's helping my mental game to be able to, to um, talk through it with someone else. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's been really good for me as well. And I've also just enjoyed it. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. I really appreciate no, you, Daryl. You. And this is a simply incredible podcast. That it is. You know what? <laughs> I can even see. We have proof. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's all disc, we it get. must be true. <laughs> that's all we got. And you guys, have an incredible day.